Hello and welcome to this session on sparse categorical cross entropy. So we know that categorical cross entropy it has a loss function of something which looks like this uh, y of t log of p, where we in y we talk of probability distribution of actual values and in p we talk of probability distribution of predicted values, right? So a sparse categor categorical cross entropy is uh, a bit different than cross entropy, though both have same loss function. This loss function, it's same for categorical cross entropy and sparse categorical cross entropy. The difference is between the representation of classes. Say, if you have, uh, let's say, three classes in your problem, okay? If the representation of classes is one hot encoded, that means, say, the representation of the classes is in the form of like this. This is one class, this is another class, and this is third class. It's in the form of vectors. In such scenario, we use categorical cross entropy. Whereas, if your classes are simple numbers, if it's one hot encoded, you use categorical cross entropy. If it's simple numbers, such as your three classes are represented as one, two, and three, then in such scenarios, we use sparse categorical cross entropy. Okay, so sparse categorical cross entropy is only different in terms of what is the in, what is the representation of your classes. Is it in the form of some vectors like this, or it's simple numbers? Okay, so there is one advantage of sparse categorical cross entropy since it's only numbers. You can see here only numbers. So it's not vectors. Vectors take up a lot of time when it comes to its processing. So since it's not only numbers. It's very efficient in terms of memory and computation. Efficient for memory as well as computation. That means it's quicker to compute as well as it is memory efficient, does not occupy much memory. Okay, that is why preferably Wherever you have this kind of scenario, we use sparse cross uh, sparse categorical cross entropy. Okay, thank you very much.